My name is uh, Dr. Kishi Patel, Professor for University and Chief Soil Health Specialist, Mati Mati Agramad Private Limited, Anand Gujarat. Today, the topic is effect of calcium and sulfur nutrition in groundnut. India has 9.95 percent production share of peanut worldwide in 2020. So here you can see that production share of peanut worldwide in 2020. So India have 9.95 percent, whereas China 17.99 percent. So other country you can see the share Nigeria 4.49 percent, United States 2. 78%, Sudan 2.77%. So India remain second in production share of peanuts, means groundnut worldwide in 2020. The productivity of groundnut varies from 300-500 kg per hectare in the United States of America to 2,500 kg per hectare in South America. 1600 kg per hectare in Asia and less than 800 kg in Africa. So the groundnut productivity, peanut productivity is lowest in Africa, only 800 kg. But in Asia, including India, we have about 1600 kg per hectare. So the productivity of the groundnut is low as compared to the United States 3500 kg. It is due to mainly to various abiotic and biotic constraints. Abiotic stresses of prime importance include temperature, extremes, drought stress, soil factors such as alkalinity, poor soil fertility, and nutrient deficiencies. Groundnut grows best in light texture sandy loam soils with neutral pH. Optimum temperature for their growth and development ranges from 28 to 30 degrees centigrade. The crop requires about 500 to 600 millimeter of well distributed rainfall. Calcium maintains the cell integrity and membrane permeability, enhances pollen germination activate the number of enzymes for cell division and take parts in protein synthesis and carbohydrate transfer in groundnut. In general, the calcium requirement is greater for pod filling than flowering, and it is greater for flowering than vegetative growth, the high calcium. It requires in the 5 to 10 centimeters of soil for groundnut. Calcium play an important role in reproductive development of groundnut Calcium reduces the pops or blackened plumon inside the seed known as black heart and yielded the sound pores. Second nutrient sulfur. Sulfur should be considered a micronutrient along with the nitrogen and potassium. Sulfur deficiency are increasing throughout the tropics in a wide variety of soil as well as worldwide. The deficiency is mostly fine in calcareous soil and in alkaline soil. So in Gujarat, in Saurashtra area, the soil is calcareous type. So the productivity of the groundnut is lower as compared to United States and other countries. Sulfur is a constituent of protein and play an important role in oil synthesis since groundnut is rich both in oil and protein requirement of sulfur for this crop is substantial. In addition, application of sulfur significantly increases photosynthesis rate, thereby increase the hull yield and it also increases the pore yield. It is reported by Wally and Sivrat in 1994. Here you can see the sulfur deficiency in groundnut and is observed in top leaves. So sulfur deficiency and consequent crop response, particularly in oil soil crop like groundnut, are quite ostensible. Deficiency of sulfur has been frequently observed due to a number of reasons, 
like increased removal of sulfur by the crop, yielding fertilizer responsive crop varieties, increasing cropping intensity, and extensive use of free fertilizers. Apply balanced plant nutrition in soil to obtain maximum crop yield of brown nut in calcareous soil. First, we have to know the initial status of plant nutrient in soil by soil analysis. Where you will carry out soil analysis, for that, you are requested to contact Shyama Agri Clinic and Agri Laboratory Bhavnagar Gujarat. Put up your value online order to Amazon Flipkart for purchase of Shyama soil testing kit. Collect representative soil sample from your field at 10 to 20, 20 or 15 places for one acre land and make 500 gram sample by mixing as indicated in Shyama kit. Put up soil sample in a plastic bag and envelope supplied by the Sevama Bhavnagar. Dispatch envelope near your village Taluka post office, and there is no need to affix stamp ticket on the envelope. Sevama Lab Bhavnagar will dispatch soil testing report along with manures and fertilizers advice within three to five days only to your home place. We have latest fast, accurate, and precise ICP OES scientific machine for soil analysis. Apply manures and fertilizer in soil at the time of sowing and nitrogen top dressing also. If soil is deficient in micronutrients, then apply it as basal or foliar spraying on plant as per our soil testing report advice. So here you can see that it is a Sevama Agri Clinic and Laboratory. And here the YouTube of Sevama Agriculture and Laboratory along with ICP OES scientific machines. And the website of the Sevama is at WTPS Sevama.in. So if you have interest, then uh, Okay, it is not working. Then regions. The main regions are the increasing use of high analysis fertilizer that contain no sulfur. So why the sulfur deficiency is observed nowadays? So the main regions are the increasing use of high analysis fertilizer that contain no sulfur. We are using urea and DAP which not contain sulfur. The increasing use of high-link crop cultivars that require more sulfur. So you know that the high yielding variety has been developed and the, the crop yield increasing. So obviously they require more uptake of the sulfur and the decrease atmospheric deposition downwind from industrial urban center that have air pollution control. Effect on crop yield by sulfur. Crop yield and nutritional quality are affected by sulfur. With the improvement effects on animal and human nutrition, deficiency in the sulfur containing amino acid, methionine, cysteine, and cysteine posed by inaggregated sulfur uptake can result in serious malnutrition in monogastric animals. Sulfur increases the methionine content of cereal proteins, thereby increasing their nutritional value. Sulfur also increases the protein content of grain legumes. Sulfur increases oil content in oil seed crops like groundnut. Chlorosis. So you can see here the deficiency due to sulfur. The, we can observe the chlorosis in groundnut. So you know that the chlorosis is observed in top leaves because sulfur is a MY in plant. So they are often sandy, well-drained, subject to leaching with variable or permanent charge mineralogy and low in soil organic matter. So the sandy soil have low organic matter, so it contains low sulfur. So we are observing the sulfur deficiency in that type of soil. They generally occur in 
unpolluted inland areas where the atmospheric is low in sulfur. Sulfur deficiency is tasked as chlorosis of the jungles. I told that the chlorosis is observed in younger leaves. It is not observed in the older leaves. Then sources of sulfur. So there are two sources of sulfur, elemental sulfur and gypsum. Among two, gypsum is the cheapest source of sulfur. When elemental sulfur is used, it should be applied two to four weeks before planting. So it oxidized into sulfate by the time seeds are planted. So you can note that application of elemental sulfur, you have to apply two to four weeks before planting of the groundnut. Gypsum is a salt and therefore the application of gypsum increases salinity. However, gypsum can remediate sodium related issues such as poor percolation resulting from depopulated soil. However, gypsum has the additional benefit of reducing bicarbonate and carbocarbonate, which can be toxic to many grasses and crops. If soil have low available sulfur, farmers would have to use ammonium sulfate, single superphosphate, and sulfate of potash for NPK fertilizers respectively. Response of sulfur to groundnut. So sulfur play a vital role in the development of seed and improving soil quality. Oil quality, sorry. Groundnut is rich in oils and protein, and sulfur requirement for this crop is substantially high. Gypsum is also applied at the peak pegging time of groundnut because of high demand for calcium at this time. So when there is a pegging start, then there is a high demand of the calcium. So gypsum is also applied at the pegging time of groundnut because of the high demand for calcium at this time. So it is the calcium you see. So there is need to apply the calcium at the time of the packing stage. In cases where sulfur deficiency is diagnosed during plant growth, it is possible to correct it by fertilizing while the plant is growing. Then sulfur levels from 20 to 70 kg per hectare were tried in groundnut, among which higher level of sulfur at the rate of 60 kg per hectare has recorded total taller plant higher leaf area index, dry matter production, pore number, pore and oil quality in groundnut. So oil quality is also improved. Gypsum application at 400 kg per hectare, 200 kg as a basal and remaining 200 kg per hectare during a dig up has increased the pore oil content and oil yield in groundnut. So when you are apply the gypsum, then it not only increase the pore yield, but it increase the oil content. So when the oil content is increasing, then you can increase the oil yield in groundnut. The results of National Research Center for Governor Dunagar Gujarat India indicate that application of elemental sulfur reduced the chlorosis of groundnut levels, groundnut leaves, sorry, and increased the dry matter nodal biomass, pore, hum, and oil yield, and concentration of nutrient in leaf tissue and their uptake by groundnut. The application of iron, zinc, and manganese further help in recovering the chlorosis of groundnut and increase the above parameters. On an average, application of 20 kg sulfur per hectare as elemental sulfur increased pore yield by 8.6 to 9.8 percent and oil yields by 8.8 .8 to 15 percent in groundnut. So here you can see that interaction effect of sulfur sources and level on pore of groundnut. So here you can see that among different sources, application of elemental sulfur have produced significantly higher pore yield 13.14 gram per plant 
than other sources. Similarly, application of sulfur at the rate of 20 ppm produced significantly higher pore yield 13.56 gram per plant than other sulfur level. So here you can see that S level 20 milligram per kg at 20 ppm at the using the source of elemental sulfur means S4 record is significantly higher pore yield 14.95 gram per plant than other interactions. Field experiment conducted at Agronomy Farm College of Agriculture Pune during Kharip 2006 and 2007 to investigate the influence of phosphatic fertilizer, gypsum, and sulfur on yield contributing character and yield of groundnut. The results also revealed that the yield contributing characters like number of developed pod per plant, pod weight per plant, 100 pod weight, 100 kernel weight, selling percent and dry pod and hulm yield were favorably influenced due to recommended dose of fertilizer plus gypsum at the rate of 5 kg per hectare, 250 kg gypsum per hectare at the time of sowing and the remaining 250 kg gypsum per hectare at the time of pack formation. Plus, you should have to apply 5 metric ton farm yard manure per hectare. The results of Junagar Agriculture University, Junagar, Gujarat, indicate that ground requirement to calcium during the pore filling stage. Calcium take directly by developing pore from the 5 to 7 cm of soil. Gypsum is a cheap source, I told that, of calcium 90 to 24% and sulfur 15 to 18 percent. The critical limit of calcium is 1 millimicron per 100 gram of soil in the root zone and 3 millimicron per 100 gram soil in the pod zone, depending on the soil test. The port experiment results of Junagat Agriculture University, Junagat also indicate that maximum yield of curry groundnut can be obtained with the application of elemental sulfur at 20 ppm on medium black calcareous soil of Saurashtra. So here you can see the calcium deficiency in groundnut crop. So groundnut requirement to calcium during the pore filling stage. So here you can see that the application of calcium 100 produce significantly higher fillet pore 23.1 then control. The seed treatment have highest 100 seed weight 37.2 gram as compared to the other calcium levels. So iron deficiency in groundnut apply ferrous sulfate 19% at the rate of 50 kg per hectare in soil or effect efficiency corrected in standing crop by foliar spraying of 1% parasulfate plus 0.01% citric acid, that is 15 gram parasulfate you have to take, plus you have to add 1.5 gram citric acid in 10 liters of water and mix it well. And you have to spray at 30, 50, and 70 days after sowing of groundnut. So if you have liked my YouTube, please subscribe it. If you have any query, then please ask me on email patelpc12 at the gmail.com. Thank you very much.